My name is Chris Jones. I'm an attorney with the law firm Lewis Longman and Walker. I practice primarily in environmental law and also a little bit of land use law as well. I am a Florida native. I was born in Hastings and raised there, which is northeast Florida, just outside of St. Augustine. I went to the University of Florida for undergrad and got a degree in construction management. After undergrad, I went back to work on my family's farm. I was the fifth generation in my family to, to farm. We are all or we're all potato farmers. And so I spent about four or five years growing and helping manage our family's potato potato production. Then while I was there, I got involved in several environmental issues that intersected with the agricultural community. And through that experience I got an interest in law. So I decided to go back to school and I went to the University of Florida and got a law degree. And then after law school, I got a, got hired by Lewis Long and Walker and I now live and work in West Palm Beach. I first became interested in food policy in law school. My second year, um, my second summer, I had the opportunity to intern at the Harvard Food Law and Policy Clinic. And up until that point, most of my understanding of food and, you know, food production was very, was pretty much limited to agricultural production. And my time at Harvard really opened my eyes to, to how much more there is to food production and, and processing and distribution and consumption and waste. And the framework of looking through food systems really caught my imagination and uh, kind of ever since then, something I've, I've been very interested in and because um, it's, it's a really important thing. What ways does my job intersect food policy? Well, there's primarily two ways. The land use law has a very direct impact on all sorts of aspects of the food system. So based on zoning laws and regulations, uh, that controls where we can build things. And so as you can imagine, it has a very uh, direct impact on whether cities have how much green space they have, whether there's it allows for urban agriculture or being able to raise animals and in the proximity of residential areas with food that's getting produced. Uh, the second way my job kind of brushes up against food policy is a little more subtle. Uh, most of the work I do relates to water law and water issues. And as you can imagine, we need water to grow our food. And in particular, we need clean water to grow our food. So there are a number of federal regulations that control and, and dictate what constitutes clean water and, and creates a regulatory framework for at least attempting to clean water that's already dirty and then keep water that's clean, clean into the future. And so that... That impacts your food system in a couple ways, mainly growing, say, vegetables. Um, if you're irrigating your land, you don't want to be irrigating your land with water that has a lot of pollutants in it, especially for something like leafy green vegetables, where you might be irrigating through a sprinkler system or something that contacts the leaves. So if you don't have clean water, then you're going to be putting dirty water out there and it might get on the leaves and it might make a bunch of people sick, which we don't want that. Another way that's probably even more subtle, but, but a lot more interesting, is through uh, what's known as bioaccumulation. So pollutants that go into the water uh, can actually filter up into the food chain uh, through sedimentation and then accumulation as uh, small organisms living in polluted sediment absorb pollutants and then bigger organisms come and eat those small ones. And when they eat those small ones, they take on all the pollutants that are in them. And it goes on up the food chain until you get to bigger, bigger things like 
fish and, and things that we actually consume. And over time, if, if your water's not clean enough, and if you're putting, if a lot of pollutants are going into water, then you can end up accumulating a lot of serious pollutants into your food supply, at least through through fish and, and things such as that. So um, it's very subtle, but it's as we're finding out, it has you know can have significant impacts on really important uh, parts of our, our food system. A good example that I always think about is hunger and food security. Florida produces an abundance of fresh fruits and vegetables, for instance. Uh, yet, if you look at the statistics, uh, a pretty surprising number of children are food, food insecure in our state. As I believe it's somewhere in the realm of between one in four and one in five kids uh, are food insecure at some point during, during the year. And food policy allows you to, well, looking at things through the lens of food systems, allows you to identify is it a production issue? Is it a distribution issue? You know, is it is, is it access? You know, are we not sending produce to where the hungry kids are? Uh, can they not afford the produce? Questions like that. But once you identify where the kind of weak link in the chain is, you can then use food policy to address and hopefully you know strengthen and and, and uh, mitigate those issues. Another kind of interesting food policy tie-in is the environment. So uh, food waste is a pretty serious issue. Uh, I think about um, the older statistics are, I think around a third of the food that we produce doesn't get eaten. And so when it doesn't get eaten, uh, it typically ends up in a landfill. And one of the consequences of that is uh, increasing, um, it's a huge contributor to greenhouse gases. It's primarily methane, I believe. And methane is extremely potent, uh, much more potent than carbon dioxide. So knowing that as an issue, we can then say, OK, why is this food getting wasted? And food policy helps us uh, find solutions to you know, reduce food waste or recycle it and, and put it to other productive uses that don't necessarily um, that, that have better, better results, better outcomes than sitting and, and decomposing in landfills. You know, I, I think my my main hope, well, it's my belief really that we can produce enough food to feed everyone in the world. Um, currently we actually produce enough calories that, that we could feed everyone, but it's really not just making sure people have enough calories, it's also making sure uh, people have proper nutrition. And the reason that it's so important, well, for obvious reasons, if you don't have food, you know, you can't live. But if you get proper nutrition, especially in critical points in your life, when you're when you're a child and when you're developing and growing, we know that that better nutrition leads to better health health outcomes and also uh, better performance in life. So your ability, your children's ability to learn and and be productive in school and pay attention are all affected by their access to proper nutrition. And my neighbor's children, my, my, my nieces and nephews, and the children all over the place that I don't know, I will be affected by how they grow up and how they develop and whether they become, you know, they develop their, their intellect to the, its you know, maximum potential and, and are able to go out and be, you know, do productive, cool, interesting things. Or if, if, if they're not, if they don't get enough health, you know, enough food, they're going to be desperate and be put in really bad situations. And, and you know, it doesn't take much knowledge of history to, to, to know that when people get in those situations, you know, our outcomes are a lot worse. And so I think it should be one of the, the main goals of, you know, of our society as, as you know, citizens to make sure that we're producing enough healthy food and making sure that it gets to, you know, to everyone who needs it. And Food policy, you know, looking at things from a through a food systems lens, uh, is probably the best way to make sure that you know it's probably our best hope of, of being able to achieve that goal um, because it can identify issues with production, with distribution, with cost, uh, and and it's going to be through those.
various frameworks that we can figure out why kids aren't getting fed, you know, why the food that they need is not getting to them. And, and hopefully at that point, we can get enough people to care to, to make a change.